Now let's see one of the applications of the conditional probability. Um, we already know that we have seen this one, right? P of A given B is equal to P of A intersection B divided by P of B, right? Similarly, we have also seen that P of B given A is equal to P of A intersection B divided by P of A. Isn't it? We have already seen this. Now, from this, this is called conditional probability. From this conditional probability, we derive a new theorem called as multiplication theorem in probability. Multiplication theorem. And this is a very important theorem in the sense most of the for most of the questions from now on will be using this multiplication rule now what does this multiplication rule says is see this now from this formula right so what is P of a given B the probability of a happening given that B has already happened now what is P of A intersection B A and B are two events the probability that both the events happening right so now just see this P of A intersection B if I if I multiply both sides with P of B then what do I get then I get that I'm not doing anything I'm just trying to take the basic simple formula and I'm trying to write it in a some other form I'm trying to multiply both sides with P of B then what I get is if I multiply both sides with P of B then I get P of A intersection B is equal to P of B into P of A given B what does it mean the probability that two events A and B happening the probability of these two events both a and b happening is equal to probability of b happening into probability of a happening given that b has already happened now similarly if you take this formula this one right and if you up, if you multiply both sides with p of a then again we get the same thing p of a intersection b is equal to p of a into p of b given a now what does it mean the probability that these two events a and b happening simultaneously is equal to probability of a happening first and then probability of b happening given that a has happened got it now this is called as multiplication theorem and in fact this is called as multiplication theorem on dependent events dependent events so what is dependent events and what is independent events is sometimes what happens is the probability of a event happening will not affect the probability of other event happening which means sometimes it so happens that if we have already seen that an event has happened even after knowing about that the probability of other other event happening does not change okay so what i'll do is let me explain you this one with some examples and then i'll take the independent events now we are talking about dependent events so the classic example to explain this dependent event is this is the, this, this is a very popular example okay now let us say we have a box and in this box let us assume that we have two uh, green balls and three red balls three red balls okay now I want to conduct an experiment I want to draw two balls one after the other without replacement okay now what is it I have a box and in this box I have totally five balls three are red and two are green now I want to withdraw or I want to draw two balls in such a way that uh, first one I want to uh, draw green and second one I want to draw a red okay so I'll write like this so G1 which means in the first draw I want to get uh, a green ball and R2 which means in the second draw I want to get a uh, red ball right but then there is a glitch here this this small condition here is I don't want to replace the ball after the first withdrawal got it so what is it the box is containing five balls now I am going to withdraw one ball from it 
and I will not replace it. Without replacing it, I am going to draw, withdraw the second one. Now, in this case, what I am interested is, what is the probability that I draw green ball first and then red ball? Now, if you observe it, it is a dependent event. The reason is, once I have withdrawn green ball, then the probability of getting the red ball will change. That is why they are dependent events. Now, how can I write it in multiplication theorem is, how can I solve it is like this. P of probability of drawing green ball first and red ball next is equal to probability of drawing a green ball first multiplied with probability of drawing the red ball given that green ball has already been drawn right now what is it what is the probability of drawing the green ball you totally have how many balls here five balls out of which how many green balls are there two balls right therefore probability of drawing the green ball is two by five multiplied with what is the probability of drawing the red ball given that we have already drawn one green ball now if you have already drawn one green ball this is no more there in the uh, box therefore what is remaining only four balls are remaining out of this four three are red balls that is why into three by four got it you can calculate that so this is the uh, meaning of conditional probability are you getting this so what is conditional probability i mean this multiplication theorem is now if the events are dependent then we can use this conditional probability formula and convert it to multiplication theorem and we can use it right okay it can it can even be extended to more than more than one event so here even though here we have discussed we have shown only about two events it can even be uh, extended to more than three more than two events like this let's say i want to find out what is the probability of three events happening simultaneously e1 e2 e3 then how can i do this it is nothing but according to multiplication theorem probability of e1 happening multiplied with probability of e2 happening given that e1 has already happened multiplied with probability of e3 happening given that e1 and e2 has already happened got it so let's see one example for that model let us assume that we have one two three three in green balls and one two three four five five red balls okay in a bag and now i want to draw three balls without replacement i'll draw them one by one i'll draw the first ball i'll draw the second ball i'll draw the third ball now what is the probability that all the three balls are going to be red okay so now i want to find out the probability that all the three balls are red so what does what does it mean i am interested in this probability that first ball is red and second ball is red and third ball is red how can we do that now again using the multiplication theorem so are they dependent or independent events they are actually dependent events why why are they dependent is once you have drawn one red ball and if you didn't replace it back then the probability of getting the second red ball is going to get affected right and once you have drawn two red balls from the bag without replacing then the probability of getting the third red ball is going to get affected which means it is going to get changed compared to the initial chances initially what are the chances and then after drawing two balls what are the chances they are going to change that is why uh, one event is actually depending on the other event then in this case they are called as dependent events later i'll talk i'll talk about independent events as well but for now just fix fix uh, for this see this now what is this p of r1 first so probability of picking the red ball first and then given that we have already picked one red ball what is the probability of picking the second red ball right which means given that we have already picked up the red ball in the first try what is the probability that you pick up the red ball in the second try into probability of p of r3 given that 
R1 and R2 has happened which means what is the probability of picking the third ball also as red given that first ball is already picked as red and second ball is already picked as red. Now what is the probability of picking the first red ball 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 red balls are there and total number of balls are 8. 5 by 8 into now we have already picked up one red ball then how many red balls are remaining four red balls are remaining and how many total balls are remaining only seven initially there were eight but one of them was you know picked out and then it is not replaced so the keyword here is the balls are not replaced without replacement we are doing this when we do it with replacement then they will become independent right so if you pick a red ball and again if you leave it there then the probability doesn't change then that becomes dependent but here it is independent right into now we have picked up two red balls now the third one also if you have to pick up the red ball then it is going to be three by six right this is the probability therefore it can be used as a chain it is a kind of chain it is also sometimes called as chain rule right because we are going to chain them all all the events right so this is an example in which we are going to use the multiplication theorem on dependent events later we shall use the multiplication theorem on independent events as well i'll show you later but first let's do some more examples on this then we can go to the next next model okay fine Hi. if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take GATE every year, there are only 500 seats in old IITs. So all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And IITs, universities better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%. But all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting it, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join Game of Visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 Okay, thank you.